Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixup Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. So I'm going to be showing you how to make these cards here. This inspiration came from a stall called Cardio when I went to the Creative Craft Show, which by the time this video goes out probably would have been about three, maybe even a month, three weeks, maybe even a month ago. But there was this store called Cardio and it was so busy, at first we couldn't even see what was going on because they had two demo tables and there was just too many people around them. So we went off and we came back to it later. And basically they would, they have this just a huge, amazing collection of stamps. So I'll show you here because my mum actually brought these ones here. So she brought Festive Flurry. And they're all silhouette stamps, so they're all just to be, you know, stamped in one colour. So and really you want to be doing it in black for this effect anyway but you can do them obviously in any colours that you like and then they had these stencils now they did have other ones as well they had like a, a teardrop style bauble but mum brought the the circle one here and you can create this look here so I'll just show you because this is one that we were playing around with which is not finished yet there's no sentiment there's no glitter on it or anything but you imagine with the bow and this one is going away from the silhouette kind of stamp. So I just wanted to show you that you can use any stamps that you have and add colour and still have it within that bauble and create a really fun effect. This is great, I think, if you've got someone that is into a particular hobby, maybe. They might like a, you know, I don't know, motorbiking or um, skiing and things like that. And you could do that all within a snow globe or a, a, a bauble. I keep saying snow globe because I've done one as a snow snow globe, which is this one here. So once I show you the tutorial, it's exactly the same process, but rather than sticking the tops on, because I've done these myself, I've just drawn this base to make it look like a snow globe. Now, I was watching the lady do the demo, and it, you know, it's it was wonderful, it really was, and my mum was totally you know, drawn into it, and she's gonna be buying some more, and she's had a look on their website, and there's loads, but I just thought, you know, I've got lots of silhouette stamps, and I'm pretty sure that I can do this using some masking sheets, and that's how I'm gonna show you that in today's tutorial, and you can even do it without the masking sheet. You can just cut it with normal paper. You don't really wanna use a cardstock, you wanna use a thinner, like I said, a paper, and you can just die cut into that, and you can create, you just want a circle stencil, and then you can add this piece on here, and then that's just drawn with a fine liner. And I just think they look brilliant. No one is the same, although these two are, this is the one I do in the tutorial today, so I'm gonna show you how to make that one in a moment, because I'll just edit that piece in. So I kind of went off this one. So, but you can see my little kind of hill there is different, the placement's slightly different, the bird's higher here. So although it is the same, it's slightly different, you know. Um, this one here, I really like using the green. This one here's got the rolling hills. So you've got one, two, and I've done, you know, you do have to kind of play around a bit with your proportions. So you've got your foreground and then you've got your background and things like that. So look at the sizes of, you know, what you're using. But I do urge you, go over and check out Cardio on Facebook and um, there are lots of YouTube videos as well of people using them, their product and making these kind of cards. And there's just so much great inspiration out there, so go and check it out. But I'm aware that not everybody can get hold of this product because I know a lot of you you know, are from other parts of the world. So I just wanted to show you a way that you can still create these fantastic looking cards with very limited supplies and using, um, using stamps that you may already have. So I just wanted to quickly just show you the stamps that I've used. You'll see them in the tutorial in a moment, but they're all out of the packaging. So all of the sentiments have come from the big Christmas words, the Woodware Clear Magic ones. I've used these loads of times. I got these last Christmas, so but I'm sure they're still available, so I will link them below. But when it comes to all the other stamps, I probably won't be able to link these. Some of them are very old. But just to show you what I mean by a silhouette stamp, if you're unsure, it's the ones that are here. So just completely blocked. So they will stamp just that whole block shape. And it's the silhouette, it's the, out, it's the outer shape that you're, you're wanting. But then saying that, like the trees and stuff, is is you know it's winter, it's autumn, the leaves have dropped, so all you have are the the you know the trees like that. They don't have leaves on them, so I'm sure lots of you will have something like that. Um, here, these ones here, I did use on some. Um, there, they were the trees. Were they those ones, or maybe they were on another one? Um, anyway, again, that kind of style. This stamp set here is where I used this one here. And you can see him used at the front there. Um, there's the trees. 
that I used here on the background here and here and there and on that one as well. So I used that one quite a lot. Again, I don't know where that one's from. I have listed some of them, yeah, they're here. I used the smaller one. I used that quite a lot there. Um, that must be a different one actually. Maybe it was the other one. But anyway, that's from Creative Stamping issue 27. It was Woodland Christmas. That would look lovely coming in around it all. You've got the fir cones there and the holly. They would all work really well. This was just another example. I didn't use it, but this was from Paper Chase a long time ago. But there's these little Christmas ones here. This one is where I used the fence. So you've got it there, 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 and there. So I used that one quite a lot. Uh, along with the trees. These trees were used on one of them. Maybe it was one of these, actually. I've got them confused. And that's Creative Stamping Winter Garden. That's 2016. So again, I probably was well, no way. You, you might find any someone selling it on eBay. And then this one I loved. This is what I've used on this one, this one, and this one. And it's that main piece that goes across and that's from Crafts Beautiful magazine, issue 313, Winter Woodland. And then I've used that tree, that was it. That's the one I've used there. I love the way that's come out. And I've done second and third generation stamping. So I stamped it and then straight away just stamped again and then stamped again, didn't re-ink in between. And you get that real nice gradient of your, you know, the trees there, it just looks lovely. And then there's some birch tree there. And then this was the other one I used. So I used that birch, which is right on the front of this one here um, again all of these have worked and there's the house that's the house I used there and also did I only use it once oh I did only use it once yeah just there and that was from Crafts Beautiful again it's that same so those two were part of an A4 set so that was just to give you an idea so excuse the the rather long intro there but I just wanted to show those because I know that a lot of you do ask so I'm now going to show you how to make this one here okay so you would have just seen my nice clean introduction that I've done but uh, yeah this is how I work so like I always say that you you will think I'm quite a clean and uh, tidy crafter but actually there's a lot of mess that goes on before the video starts so this is how you know my view is right now so what I'm going to do is I have got the five by seven card blank so I've got the black card blank here and then I'm going to be working on a piece of four and three quarters by six and three quarters white cardstock. So that will go on here, giving me a nice frame. So what I've gone ahead and done is I've cut a piece of this masking sheet to slightly over this measurement. OK, so it's probably, what did I say that was? Four and three quarters. So four and seven eighths by six and seven eighths. And you'll see there that goes over just covering all four sides and you want it to cover it slightly because when you go to stamp because you're stamping outside of your area so you're stamping into this once we cut it in a moment with this here if you had this masking slightly shorter than the cardstock underneath you run the risk of ink transferring onto it so if you just cover it all completely it's just much much better so this masking sheet here is from the Hunky Dory for the Lover Stamps. I've had this a while, I've had it a few times now. You get three A4 masking sheets. Now, just to give you an idea of how many cards, so I've done one, two, three, I've done five cards with this one here. So this was the one that I cut, a nice strong tack, but it doesn't rip the cardstock when you take it off. But that's what I've done, and that's what I'm going to redo now with you with this die and this piece of masking sheet. Now, this will go further, but what tends to start to happen, and I've noticed it slightly, is because I'm using Distress Oxide ink, some of the colours lifting. So if I went in with like a yellow on here now, it'd get quite muddy. So they won't last forever, but you can certainly get quite a few. If you're using the same colours throughout, I've been playing around, so I've used you know, the yellows and the greens and things like that that I showed you. That's why I wouldn't want to use this anymore. But if I was just using that same grey for everything, I could certainly still make more cards with this. So anyway, I'm just going to leave that one up there. So back to this one here. I've got this circle die. Now this one measures four, it's a four inch diameter circle. Now you can have any size circle you want. You might be working on a much larger card. You might be working on an eight by eight card. So you'd want a much bigger circle. You may be doing smaller cards, more note card sizes, then you would want to reduce your circle. But you can see how mine sits within this piece here. And you just want to make sure that you've got even sides. Now it's up to you how low down you have it. Let me just bring in, because I think the one, yeah, this is, I think, 
this is the one that I want to redo again or something similar. So you can see how far down I have it there. Bearing in mind this masking tape's a little bit bigger, so I think that there is going to be just fine. Because you want to take into account what your sentiment is going to be. So my sentiments are all from the woodware. It's this one here. I've lost my top sheet. Everything I'm using, as always, will be linked below. But the happy, no, sorry, the season's greetings got obviously slightly slightly taller or thicker because of the the G's there. They come right down. But the happy Christmas is shorter. So you just need to kind of lay everything down, then play around with your sentiment and kind of sit it there. Make sure you give yourself enough room because you want to also, you know, if you do do it like this, you want to add in that little bauble topper piece that I've done, which I'll show you towards the end. So I'm happy with that there. So I'm just going to run that through my dye machine. Okay, so you shouldn't have any problems with it cutting. There is that plastic on the back, but it's thin. It's not like a thick acetate or anything. Now keep that, that's always handy for other projects because you know that's a nice masking circle there. So you can get some great effects with that. But now I have my template, okay? So I'm just going to pop that to one side because I don't want to get that one damaged. And then I've got my piece here ready and you will have like a little piece that overhangs there so you can easily peel it off. And then I'm just going to take this off. It shouldn't stretch. I mean, you don't want to yank it because it will lose its shape. Actually, what I'm going to do is start from the top. And then I can kind of work it down. And that way I think it'll be a bit easier to stick if I do it partially. So I know it's got to overhang ever so slightly. So just make sure you keep everything nice and even. And then I can just slowly just bring that down. Okay, there we go. So now I've got that lovely masked off area so now we can just go to town do whatever we want all within this section and then the best part is the reveal when we peel off the masking okay so this is the one that I want to kind of follow again but this time I think I'm going to go for more of a purpley color so for that one there I use the Victorian velvet distressed oxide and then the yellow I used in the other card was fossilized amber and then I also used that weathered wood which was that gray which is really nice for the winter scenes because it I don't know it just gives a bit of a foggy grey cold look to the you know the scene that you're creating but I did like that one I think it looks nice but I do want to try let's just have a look I think I'm going to go for the seedless preserves because the real dark colour of that's beautiful but it does it lightens you get a real nice kind of blend from it so I'm going to just I want to keep that one in view so you can see it I'll pop it there get rid of my cup of tea okay so I'm using Versafine for the the images the the actual silhouette images because it's just a real nice intense black you get a real great I think result using that one and then I did go over some areas when I go to touch them up with just this one here which is the uni super ink marker again it's really nice and black so it just worked really well so you can do it depends which way you want to do it you can add the color first or you can add your actual silhouettes first I'm going to add the color first because I want to create some kind of you know like the I was going to do kind of rolling mountains but I'm just going to do that one effect there now to get that it's really really easy I'm just looking around for my very dirty used piece of cardstock I might have to cut a new one here it is this one here you can see what I've been using and I've, like I said I've used that for five cards but I'm probably not going to use it on this one because I'm going to be using a lighter colour so I'll just show you how I got that effect. I've just got a piece of scrap card here and with some scissors you want to cut it well it's entirely up to you how you want your mountain to look I just want it to be just kind of a nice kind of arch like so and then maybe goes off again. You can obviously use all different parts of this, but now I can sit that on there and you can see I'm going to have that rolling kind of mountain. I'm going to come down a bit lower because again I do want to do the branch high up because that's one of my favourite. Of all the silhouette stamps I've pulled out, that was my favourite one. So I reckon I'm going to kind of go, I think there will be okay. I'm going to pop that one there and then I'm going to gra grab my little mat here because it's quite nice too. Um, I've got that big one but because I've got everything else out on my desk I'm just going to use this one. Okay so position it where you want it. I'm going to go like I said about there I think and then I'm just going to bring in that blending brush there because that looks like it's those kind of colours. 
Okay, now I want to have a real dark ring around my bauble and then a nice dark kind of line here, but I want it to be quite light within there. So take off most of the ink. I'm putting it onto this masking. You can rub it off on here on some spare card and then start to come in. And this is what I mean about that masking tape going over the cardstock underneath, because you can see I've already gone over onto my mat. If we hadn't have done that, that would now have already started to kind of frame the card there, and we don't want there to be ink anywhere else apart from in this circle. So I'm just going to pick up some more again, take off the excess, and then go in. I'm just going to pop them under my arm there, because they're going to jingle all the time. Oh, and then if it moves, just pop it back in place, but that's fine, because I want that intense colour down there. And then just start kind of blending it out. Again, I want it to be quite dark along this bit here. And as I mentioned at the beginning, this will work with any theme, any stamps. It's just such a fun technique. So I have gone a little bit darker than I would have wanted there, but by the time we add all the black silhouette stamps and everything else, it will be fine. So I'm going to keep a little bit of a highlight there of that white, because I think that's going to work quite nice behind the trees. Okay, so now when I take that away, you can see I've got this nice hill effect, okay? Now, again, it's easy to line that all back up. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, I would keep this down. I wouldn't lift it up at all until you've stamped, you know, your trees or whatever it is that you want to have. So I've got this long kind of cluster of trees here, and this is from, I will try and, well, I will... Yeah, I'll try and link some of them, but they're old stamps. They're all, I literally just went through all my stamps and just pulled out all different ones. But you can see how it looks here. Okay, it's just this lovely, like, woodland scene. So I'm going to ink that one up. Okay, hold this down. And then I'm going to bring all of the bottom parts of the trees will actually be stamped onto this piece of card here. All I want is the tree tops to come through. I want to get as much of it in the circle as possible. Make sure I keep everything nice and straight. I think there. Okay, and then take that one off. Perfect. Now don't worry if you've got any bits, like I said, that maybe you didn't stamp properly because that's when you can go in with one of these thin pens and you can just tidy all of that up. But I'm pleased with that. I might have something there, but I think by the time we add the other bits down, they'll probably be um, sort that out anyway. But now, if, again, if you just lift it up a bit, can you see just how we've got the trees like poking up from that rolling heel there from behind. So I don't actually think I'm going to be adding anything more now with this piece, so I can take that away. I'm not going to probably use that anymore, but it's as you can see, it is easy to line up. But what I want to do now is I do want to carry some of that pink around to frame still the bottom of the bauble, because at the minute this is just white, and if you lifted it off it would look a little bit odd. So I'm going to just take off some of the excess and just come in quite lightly around the bottom. You almost probably won't really pick it up yet, but you will really notice it when you come to actually, you know, peel this piece away. It will frame it quite nicely. So it's quite subtle, quite soft there. Okay, but that, that's fine. Okay, and then you can see here what I mean about the trees, where they don't quite meet up with that line, some of them. So all I'm doing is just coming down, just joining it just ever so slightly. Actually, it's coming with a thinner one again. It's this one here I used. Yeah, that's the one. You don't want to go over that line, but you do want to get it as close to it as you can. And again, you're going to be adding your glitter and snow, and all those things will help cover up any little bits that you might not be happy with, so do not worry. There we go. I'm happy now that that's joined perfectly with that line. Next, I want to create this piece here. Now, I did find that I got a better result when I used my stamping platform. So I'm going to take away, because I probably won't need any of that anymore now, the colour. But if you did want to add more than the one colour, then obviously do so. I'm going to bring in my stamping platform. Now I have already got that positioned, and that should marry up perfectly, because it's the same size as all the other cards that I've been working on. So I am going to leave it there, but there's no ink on it. There might get a little pr um, print of it on here, but it should be fine. So I'm just going to hold that in place, and then I'm going to bring in this one here. And again, I kind of want to, so this is what's in the foreground, so this is going to be, you know, right in front of you. And I think probably there. 
Yeah, I think that's going to work. Actually, I'm going to take that away because it's probably going to hit that magnet. So we'll leave that there until later. So we're going to pick that one up. And because we're now stamping over the colour, because I'm using the platform, I can go in and stamp a couple of times if I need to. Now, I do know that one of the birds has got a default on the stamp, so it leaves a bit of a, a bobble. Oh, it seems to have disappeared. Or oh, maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was just a bit of fluff that I never got rid of because it's not there. But you see there where it's not stamped? That's why I'm glad I've used the platform because I can just go in there and go over it again. Yeah, that looks really nice. I love it with that pink, actually. It's lovely. I'm just going to go and do one more. Yeah, that's perfect. You want it really crisp. The, the, the crisper the black, the better this card looks, I think. It's just there's something about it. Okay, so we'll take all of that out. Pop that all to one side for the minute. Okay, so I'll just bring this up so you can see what I've got. So we've got those trees in the background there. Then we've got this twig that's coming right over in front of us. Now I want to create some detail down here. So I'm going to bring in the snowman. So let me take that one out of the set here because this is from the snowman is actually from the Cardio collection. But as I mentioned before, go check them out because they have so much on their um, their website. There's just so much to look at. Okay, so I'm going to have ink him up. Make sure that is enough there. I'm going to just do a little test stamp with him. Yeah, he's so cute. He's such a lovely little stamp. Okay, so I'm going to have him just there. There we go. Perfect. I'm going to add a little bit of shadow around the bottom of him and stuff in a minute. Then I want to bring in that fence or the, yeah, it is a fence, isn't it? Again, a wall. No, it is a fence. Here it is. Of course it is a fence. Yeah. Okay, so that's going to sit, I think about there. I need to make sure that that bird, this here, is completely dead straight. So again, let me bring in that ink there. So keep that really straight. There we go. See, right now it's really hard to see this because all you're seeing is all that you just, it takes a while, but once you've done it, it's um, it's quite exciting to, um, yeah, to reveal it all. So I'm just going over that there because there's a few little white bits coming through. So just like so. There we go. I feel there could be, I don't know, I almost want to have, do I add the deer as well? Let's have a little look. I feel it could have like a deer up in the, right up here. Make sure I get him really quite black. Or I could have him, hmm. you see he could go up there. But then he'd look too big, he wouldn't look right against the, um, got a little bit of black there, I need to be careful. Hmm, I want to put something else. Maybe I'll do the little rabbits. This is the lovely thing about the cardio ones because they're so small, so they are perfect to fit in you know, where you feel you might be missing something. So I want him to face the snowman. So let's do that one there. Let's go down. No, I'm going to do him down here. There we go. Cute. Yep, I'm happy with that. Right, so this is when you want to be 100%. Make sure you are, you know, pleased with where everything is. I think I'm just going to do a little bit of... Do I do that after or do I want to do that now? No, actually, I'm going to leave it. I'm done. So just carefully, because some of the ink on top of it might be wet, just peel it off. Try and keep it all intact. Like I said, try not to stretch it because you will get a lot of uses out of this. Just make sure it is dry each time, like so. And because it's a low tack, it won't kind of stick on each other. Just untangle it a bit. There we go. And you can lay that back down on the clear paper, the, like the carrier street sheet that it would have been on. But now... Apart from that little bit of black there, which I can get rid of. Look how cute that looks. Now we've got our glitter and everything else to add to it and we need to add the sentiment. So I'm going to do that next. Okay, so I want this to be high because I've got the top of my bauble. So I'm going to lay that oh, just there. These bits now that just bring it all together, it looks so nice. Again, I'm going to do that twice because I want that to be really crisp. There we go. Take that one off. I need to give that a good clean. Okay, so now you can see how it's starting to come together. Next, I want to make my little 
actually no I'll do that last because that's one of the finishing touches so this black here I can get rid of with a nail file there is a special I keep meaning to get one I think I'm going to remember to now is you just very lightly just sand off that there and it will come away Okay, that one's gone. And then this is going to have glitter on it now. So, okay, so this is the Quickie Glue Pinpoint Roller. These are really inexpensive, but perfect for this project. So what I'm going to do first of all is I want there to be snow glistening all along this top line here. So I'm just going to follow that all across. And then because I've got some black there, I'm just going to bring a bit down here and just a little bit around there. And then I want to bring lots of snow around Mr. Snowman. I also want to frame the circle, so I'm going to do a thin layer all the way around. It comes out blue, but it will dry clear. And so you can be quite, I, I'm going over the edge, it really doesn't matter because it's just that lovely glitter that's going to be going over the top anyway, or the diamond snow. Diamond frost, sorry. So just bring that all around, like so. Then I want to have some snow going over this branch that's like settled on there and then there'll be some snow that's settled on the top of here and on the bottom one as well and then a little bit around the rabbit like that maybe just put a few more little lines because I'm going to put some snow over the top so I think that's enough with that so I've already got some still on the bottom of this piece here so I'm just going to scoop it up but this is the stuff here so it's the Cosmic Shimmer Diamond Frost and it's lovely. It's an ultra fine glitter. So I'm just going to use that and probably that will cover. Now it may stick to a lot of the black because it's probably still a little bit wet, but I'm just going to brush over that. But now instantly, can you see all the sparkle that you get? There we go, it picks it up better there. It looks amazing. But I do want to bring out and pop some of that black again. So I've just got a very small, here we are paintbrush and because I know I didn't put any on the rabbit as soon as I go over him it will just kind of fall off see there just instantly you get that lovely black come back and I know I put it only on the tops of the, the little fence there so I can just rub off that and on the bird and then start from the top here you'll see it better actually because this is all just going to drop down on what I've just done but can you see because it will just end up falling off so you, you know you do really want to brush it off unless you put the glue there the rest of it won't move but now you get that lovely pop so all these leaves I didn't put any glue on any of this so I can just brush that all off and it will just fall down onto those other areas and then you can go back in again go over it and you can also use things like the but it might warp the card stocks so you'd have to be careful but the cosmic shimmer fluffy stuff that would look lovely on these kind of cards as well so it's um yeah like i said this is just the first time playing around with this i'm definitely going to be doing it again but if i just show you now so yeah start from the top but now we've got that lovely black but as it look at the the way that, that all that snow effect catches it's just it, they're beautiful you need to see these in person like i said watching the demo we were all just like when she tipped this stuff over we were all everyone was like wow that looks so nice and it is, it's just beautiful, it's so subtle and just stamping and you get great results. So I'm just gonna pop that to one side and then we can just finish the last bits. So I've just got some silver cardstock here. I did have one spare, but I seem to have misplaced it along with all the other mess on my desk, but it's fine. What I'm gonna do is just bring this one a bit closer. Oh yeah, and that's the other thing I need to do is the Nouveau Drops, but we'll do them right at the very end because I don't want to touch it after that. So I'm going to do it in centimetres. It's one centimetre by one and a half centimetres. But then what you want to do is just cut in like that, just to create that kind of bauble top. You see what I've done there? Just that little shape. And then I'm just going to grab some of my glue, a little bit on there. And I want to pop that in the centre of the bauble, like so. You can see that instantly, I think, just makes it look like a bauble. And then with that same little thin, thin pen, I don't know where this is from. Oh, here we go. Um, oh, it's from China. I got it when I was out there. It's a gel pen. But you just then want to do like a loop. It looks like some wire. Okay, I'll just bring that up. You can see there. 
And then I've got my card blank. So I'm going to stick this to the back. You can put some foam on there if you wanted to. You can see how quick these cards are to do. This was apart from me editing the die cutting and I think that was about it. I, this is real time, this video. I haven't, yeah, I wouldn't. I don't, I'm just trying to think what I would edit out, but there's nothing. Because sometimes I go away and make a coffee and things like that, so you don't want to obviously sit there with that going on. But um, no, it's a really quick card. Then I did think it looked quite nice with the Nouveau drops. Again, if I just bring them up, you can see, just added something. So they may get a little bit hidden because this is very, very similar to that colour. I'm just wondering actually whether I do, no, because I'm going to add snow. So <laughs> I was going to do white ones. Let me just make sure that this isn't going to, oh, it's fine. Sometimes you get air bubbles in them, so you just want to make sure that you've got all that off. And just pop a couple, I'm going to do like a little group of three. There's a little bit of dimension, a little bit of texture there. And then I've got my trusty, trusty Posca pen, which I, I know is running out. I'm going to have to get another one because this is being used so much. This is optional, this is the effect it gives. There's your snow, you would have seen that one at the beginning. So because I've got that one that I'm not adding the snow to, I'm gonna do it on this one just so that there's a variety then because these cards here are things, um, ones that are friends and that will probably take from me. So, and just literally, you don't wanna think about it. If you think about it, it won't work. Just go for it. I could have maybe put the Nouveau drops down after this, but it's fine, it's still gonna work. There you have it. I love them. I absolutely love these. So let me just bring in the snow globe because that one's a little bit different. All I've done with this one is I use the same mask, but I just moved it up even higher. So this one here is the same white matte as that one, but this one is um, seven eighths of an inch from the white piece. And then I just drew a freehand. I just drew a line either side and then connected it and I coloured it in with that same pen but that gives you the snow globe look. I may actually put snow on that one as well because that one would obviously work really well but I think they're great. Honestly I've just had so much fun creating these cards. Every single one is different. There's so many different ways to do them and you can add colour to them. Obviously I showed you that one, let me grab it again. This one here so that's the one that's not complete but it's just one that I thought I'd grab and show you and um, this is just a normal stamp image, it's not a silhouette image. So this one you colour, but you can still get great results. So if you do want to personalise a bauble card for somebody, you know, you might have a motorbike in it, and you could put a Christmas hat hanging off the motorbike. It could be, you know, many different hobbies. You can just add a Christmas element, whether it be some holly or a little snowman in this case here. Because this stamp set is from the, I think it's the creative stamping one. Um, but the snowman is part of that cardio, but put the snowman by the, the, the lighthouse and it turns into a Christmas card. So it's just brilliant. So have a look at your stamps, raid them, pull them all out. I've got to now remember which packs these are from and put them all back together again. But also this one here is the piece that comes from the hobby art. Here it is. And it's the sprouts. And it's this one here which will turn the sprouts into a Christmas decoration. So, you know, you might have something in another stamp set that you could pull out. So, you know, if you don't want to do that silver, because that's this sentiment, I could have done it on that one, but you could see there it would fit, you know, how that would look over this bauble instead of the metal piece there. So there's so many ways to create these. You can do different shapes. If you've got your cutting machine, cut a different shape stencil. It doesn't have to be a circle. You can use your square dies to do a square one. People have square ornaments. It doesn't have to be a circular one, but yeah, I love it. So there are the finished cards. I have had so much fun creating these and I really do think a lot of you are going to enjoy it as well. So if you love to stamp or even if you're new to stamping, it's a really fun thing to play around with. I would say if this is the first time doing it, then don't worry about doing maybe, you know, the background pieces. Just stamp lots of images within the circle and just play around with that and see where you go. And then you can kind of develop it further and start thinking about your backgrounds and your foreground and all the stuff in between. So yeah. Yeah, it's really really good fun so thank you for watching I hope you've enjoyed it if you have please give me a thumbs up it's always appreciated and consider subscribing so you get to see more fun tutorials thanks for watching bye